On today's show, we are going to be breaking down the Calgary Flames 2024 draft class as well as their entire prospect pool. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Sebastian High, the Director of European Scouting over at Dauber Prospects, typically joined by Hattie Kalakesh, and I'm very glad that you tuned in today for this show as we're going to be breaking down a very interesting prospect pool as well as a cool draft class from this past season uh, with the Calgary Flames. But before we jump straight into the episode today, uh, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. So the Calgary Flames are a, a pretty fun organization to be kind of tracking at the moment because they're in a bit of a weird in-between between, between uh, having been wanting to contend very recently and uh, against the will of the team, really, uh, being forced into a bit of a retool or rebuild. And uh, they've been adding some really intriguing players into their pipeline as a result of that in recent seasons. Um, but in the 2024 draft specifically, uh, the Calgary Flames got an absolute home run swing at ninth overall. And before we jump right into that first round uh, selection and the overall breakdown of the 2024 draft class, uh, just to let you know, the basically the structure of the episode is always to break down the draft class in the first segment, the overall prospect pool in the second, before moving on in the third, third segment to look ahead at the season in front of us the 2024-25 season, uh, along with any expectations and projections, especially for the younger players in this organization. And this is the ninth episode of this series. We're following the draft order. We'll, we'll be breaking down every single team in the NHL. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a, a big part of our summer show, uh, is, is to look at every single team and, and offer our analyses. But let's start things off here at number ninth overall, because the Calgary Flames landed a tremendous player in Zane Parekh. Uh, this is a player that uh, is a high value selection at ninth overall. The upside is stratospheric. Uh, this guy could end up being a Quinn Hughes level of offensive talent from the blue line. There is a point of game upside with this player and he's a defenseman. Uh, he was a tremendous offensive piece this season in the OHL for the Saginaw spirit. He's six foot, 185 pound. He's a right shot. Uh, and he scored 99 points, including 33 goals, um, or 96 points and 33 goals in 66 games with the Saginaw Spirit this past season on the road to a Memorial Cup victory. And he was their premier blue liner in terms of creating anything off the rush or in the offensive zone. And uh, overall, just an offensive dynamo. He's tremendously skilled and highly intelligent. The way he creates offense at the junior level is almost entirely translatable to the NHL uh, level as well. He's very intelligent with how he's able to leverage his tools to create space and time for himself. And he doesn't rely on those junior style habits in terms of uh, generating perimeter scoring chances or um, overall like over relying on his skill to do the heavy lifting for him. His brain ticks at the exact same speed as his actual physical tools do. He's a really good skater. He's a fantastic puck handler, has a wicked shot, uh, which is only going to get better as he's able to add a weight to his frame. And he's a fantastic playmaker as well. The offensive tools are off the charts with this player, and I think the Calgary Flames have their next top blue liner for the next decade and a half with this selection. Uh, Parekh is going to need a little bit of time to develop, so don't expect him to be an impactful NHLer out of the gate in year one, uh, but he likely will be an NHLer by year two or year three, and when he does make that leap, he will immediately be a high-end first power play quarterback. I think if he stepped into the NHL today, even strength might be a little bit of, a, of, of an issue, but the power play creation would already be among the better ones, among all PP1s in the league for a blue line quarterback. Uh, this is a player that 
Calgary Flames fans are going to love watching for the next uh, years ahead. And he brings so much skill and dynamism and excitement to the equation uh, that you can't really ask for too, too much more from a blue liner. With their second first round pick, the Calgary Flames selected a player that uh, at least I hadn't been expecting to go in the first round. And that's Matt Vagreden from the Muskegon, from the Muskegon Lumberjacks. This is a skilled winger uh, who's had some consistency issues over the past year. He's a Russian winger who's playing the USHL, committed to the University of Michigan in the NCAA, but he's retracting that in order to go the OHL route, which was his first choice all along. And they're finally allowing Russian players back into the league in the CHL. Um, this is a player who I, I, I've, I've been a bit skeptical about in terms of the NHL projection, mainly due to inconsistency in his ability to leverage his skill to create advantages offensively, as well as its consistency in having a high motor. There are some games where he has decently a decent level of defensive engagement. He's trying hard, but there's other games where it's like a controller disconnects and there's no engagement off puck whatsoever, which is rather concerning for me personally. Uh, I don't think I had him ranked inside my top 75. Uh, as a result of that, but clearly the Flames see a very skilled player here, and the flashes of upside are really enticing, um, I can add, but uh, not a player would have selected in this slot. That said, if you swap that selection with the next one on the board, I wouldn't mind it whatsoever, because in the second round, they went for a, another very high-value swing with Andrew Basha at 41st overall, a super high-energy, high-motor player with a lot of skill on the puck as well, and it's a very very good playmaker. He was playing Medicine Hat alongside Caden Lindstrom this past season, and when Lindstrom went down to injury, it was down to Basha and Gavin McKenna to do the heavy lifting offensively, and Basha came into a zone of his own uh, from that point onwards, and uh, he's a player that has a really strong fallback game as a high-end checking winger with that high-end intensity. He's so speedy. He's a great skater and very engaged defensively as well. But that skill on puck can also get him inside of an NHL top six if he hits his upside, in my opinion. So he would have been a great value pick at 28th. So getting him at 41st is fantastic. At 62nd overall, they went with Jacob Battaglia from the Kingston Frontenacs, a player who took quite a big step in the second half of the season when he finally started seeing more ice time in Kingston. And he's a pretty hard-nosed type of player uh, who has a pretty heavy shot with a puck on a stick. Uh, he was just getting better as the year was going on in Kingston. And I know a friend of mine, Pete Harling, who goes to a lot of Kingston Frontenacs game, games, was a really big fan of this player. And he scored 31 goals and 65 points through 67 games this season. He's a pretty good one-touch, uh, quick possession type of player who keeps the play rolling, uh, quite effective on the cycle as well. I think in the, in the late second round, that's a decent value selection, but I actually like, like their next pick, also out of the OHL, even more, and that is Henry Muse at 74th overall from the Ottawa 67s. A mobile uh, offensive defenseman who was playing in a relatively conservative system uh, in Ottawa this past season and still managed to almost put up a point a game in the OHL, logging 15 goals and 61 points through 65 games, which is also good for second on the team in scoring, uh, well behind first place, which was Luca Pinelli, who completely uh, took off this past season in terms of production. And uh, Muse also scored seven points in seven games at the U18 World Championships, playing top four minutes for Team Canada on their way to a gold medal victory. He's a really good skater. He has a, he's a pretty solid playmaker from the blue line. He's creative. He has good vision. Uh, but the defensive side of the game still has a lot of question marks. And this is why he fell on draft day, is a lot of questions around the translatability of his defensive implications. I know a couple of teams uh, had him way down the draft board, uh, at, and largely because they just struggled to, to project him into an NHL role at all. I myself don't have those same levels of concerns. I can see where they're coming from, but I was able to log about like 25 or 30 live viewings of Henry Muse over the past two seasons in Ottawa. And I've always really liked his skill. I've really liked his vision. I've really liked the way he's able to create offense. And it's also a way of creating offense that wasn't fostered as much as it could have been in that Ottawa system. I think this is a player that could really take off in terms of offensive implication and offensive effectiveness. Uh, in the coming years, I think his development curve could resemble that of another Calgary prospect in Hunter Bruce Davids, 
uh, who was obviously traded in that Elias Lindholm deal from the Vancouver Canucks and uh, really, really took off in his D-plus-1 season uh, for the Kitchener Rangers. And I see a lot of similarities between the two players. Bruce Davids is more physical. Muse is more mobile. There are differences, certainly. Uh, Bruce Davids is a bit more solid defensively as well at the same age. But I think that Muse could have a similar curve in his development. Next, the Flames went with a goaltender in Kirill Zarubin, a Russian goaltender who was picked 84th overall there in the third round. And he was playing in the MHL in Russia this past season where he, he logged uh, games for two separate teams. Um, mainly for AKM, AKM Tula, where he played 29 regular season games uh, with a 944 save percentage. And then in five playoff games, he won up himself uh, with a 945 save percentage. So really fantastic results at the MHL level. He's big. He's six foot four, 179 pounds. So has a frame to grow into. Uh, very old for the draft class as, in, as a September 20th birthday, but clearly a player that Calgary believes in and the results speak for themselves. So I think this is a decent swing on a goaltender that the organization likes in this slot. Uh, next, they went with a forward in Trevor Hoskin in the fourth round at 106th overall, who is a Niagara University commit in the NCAA and was playing in the Ontario Junior Hockey League this past season with the Coburg Cougars uh, playing 52 games and logging 42 goals and 100 points. Uh, this is a player who... Uh, wasn't on many radars, mainly because he's a 20-year-old. He's a D plus two, uh, six foot one, 174 pounds. Uh, he's a center slash right winger who shoots right. But this is a, clearly a guy who Calgary believes in. I mean, to, to pick in a player who's playing in the OJHL as a 20-year-old uh, at all in the NHL draft is a real sign of, of that belief. But uh, not a player that I'm personally overly familiar with as a result of that. Uh, that said, the next player was an absolute steal in Luke Misa from the from the um, Mississauga Steelheads in the OHL. A really speedy, pacey centerman. He's five foot ten, one hundred seventy four pounds, a bit undersized, but he's fantastic defensively. Uh, really good playmaker as well. He's able to use his speed and his pace to create gaps in defensive structures, which he sees and exploits very effectively. Uh, I've been a really big fan of this guy all season long. Uh, he's really able to also turn defense into offense. He applies defensive pressure, creates turnovers, and immediately bolts up the ice to create offense through that. Uh, in 66 games this season, he scored 26 goals and 81 points, uh, which was a really good production for a, a not-so-amazing Mississauga team this year. And uh, he was often their biggest offensive driver in the viewings that I logged, and uh, a player that I think deserved to have gone on the brink of the first or second round. I think this is this was a top 40, top 50 talent in this draft class. So to land him in the fifth round at 150th overall is just fantastic business for the Calgary Flames. At 170th, they went with Hunter Lang, a forward, uh, who was playing with the Prince George Cougars this past season, a dominant team. He was playing a depth role, uh, and he logged uh, 25 points through 66 games as a six foot six, 205 pound right shot centerman. Clearly, a massive frame that he's still uh, growing into, uh, and a player that was not getting many minutes this past season due to how stacked that lineup is. Calgary is hoping that this, that this is a player who was a bit of a hidden gem as a result of that lack of playing time. But the final pick of the draft for Calgary in the sixth round was Eric Jamison from the WHL, a six foot three, 203 pound left shot defenseman who's a real shutdown presence. He's really physical. He likes to just smile other play into the boards. Uh, he seeks out contact in all three zones. He likes to initiate that contact early. He was also able to score 10 goals and 32 points in 66 games this season. And while, yes, he is a D plus one player uh, who just turned 19 a couple days ago, uh, clearly a player who is developing on a pretty steep trajectory. Uh, he was able to progress significantly this past season after playing 65 games uh, in his draft year uh, with Everett in the WHL where he logged 13 points and a massive frame for a shutdown defenseman. And taking late round swings on defensemen is always a really strategic way to do it. Defensemen take longer to develop. There's always a chance of getting a hidden gem in the late rounds when you're dipping into that defensive pool. So 
as a whole, this is a fantastic draft class. I think Calgary hit it out of the park, especially with their first selection in Zane Perec. This gets an A grade in my book. A really, really, really strong showing for the Calgary Flames, getting fantastic value in most of their draft slots. The only thing that could have really pushed them up into the A-plus category, in my mind, would have been some more value with their second first-round pick. I have a lot of questions around Matt Vay Gruden, but we'll see how he progresses in the OHL with his D-plus-1 development and... Uh, he's clearly going to get a lot of attention and development uh, from the Calgary scouting and development staff uh, with them having invested a first round pick and acquiring him. But that wraps up this first segment. In the next one, we're going to be break breaking down the overall prospect pool, including players that have been drafted in past years. Uh, but before that, a quick word from our sponsors over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. With eBay Motors, you can get everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From LED headlights to roof racks to exhaust kits and far more, whether you're to speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're always going to find exactly what it is that you're looking for with eBay Motors. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, which is available to U.S. customers only, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car to the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Alrighty, let's keep this going in the second segment here because there's a lot of fun prospects to look into in this pool in Calgary. A couple of them were added in just the 2023 draft class, obviously the 2024 class as well, uh, and also some are a bit older, uh, whether they were drafted in 2021, 2022. Uh, but let's start off uh, at forward. We're going to go by position here, uh, starting with the forwards, followed by the defensemen, then the goaltenders. Then we're going to look at which areas of need still remain in this prospect pool as a whole and cap it off with an overall grade for the pool. Uh, starting off at four, let's kick it off with uh, Samuel Honzek, who was the 13th overall pick in last year's draft in 2023. Uh, this is a player who is a six foot 381 pound left wing slash centerman. He can play both positions. I think he will want to be developed as a centerman moving forward. He has that frame. He has those off puck habits to support play down the middle. And uh, he's been playing in the WA NHL in the past two seasons with the Vancouver Giants. In his draft year, he played 43 games, scoring 23 goals and 56 points. And this past season, as the Vancouver Giants captain, he played 33 games, logging 10 goals and 31 assists, uh, 31 points overall. So a bit of a step back in terms of production. Uh, both seasons that he's played in the WHL have been marred with injuries, but the raw tools are really fantastic here, and he's taking a step into the AHL this upcoming year. So we're going to see how he's able to adapt to the pro ranks, how he's going to maybe perhaps be able to elevate his fitness, elevate his his overall uh, routines to stay healthy and not get injured uh, in, in order to continue his development on track. And uh, he has a really wicked shot. He's He's a really physical player who's able to protect the puck extremely well. He's a really good back checker and defensive player as well. There's a lot to like in his profile. I think that he projects as a really useful and valuable middle six centerman. Uh, hopefully on the second line if he's able to, to overcome those injury issues. But uh, either way, I think he's going to be playing valuable minutes wherever he ends up in an NHL lineup as long as he's able to stay healthy. Um, he's a player I've liked a lot in the past couple of seasons. I'm really hoping he's able to uh, progress over a fully healthy AHL season this year. We've already talked about the likes of Matt Vagreden and Andrew Basha among, amongst the forwards, as well as Luke Misa, but Matthew Coronado also deserves a mention here. He's a player who took his leap to the NHL this past season, uh, playing 40, uh, 34 games in the NHL, logging three goals and nine points, as well as 41 games in the AHL, where he scored 15 goals and 42 points. 
He's uh, turning 22 in November, so he's a player who is uh, currently tracking to be an NHLer in the next year or two in terms of being a full-time top nine contributor. He's a really fun player. He's 5'10", 194 pounds. He's a right shot winger, and he's a really, really high motor guy, as Calgary Flames fans will have learned uh, with his introduction to the NHL lineup this past season. So while he was unable to really make the offensive leap to the NHL as smoothly as he may have liked to, he's still a player with a lot of high-end tools, whether it be the goal scoring or the offensive intensity the board battle ability, and so on and so forth. Um, and also a lot of uh, refined off-puck habits to still make a consistent impact. He's a guy that I think will fit in in a middle six long-term, hopefully on a second line, a little bit like that Samuel Honzak projection, uh, but more likely on the wing, whereas Honzak is hopefully projecting more as a centerman. Uh, beyond that, at forward, we still have guys like Jacob Pelletzi, who is continuing his development in the AHL. After a fantastic season in his debut uh, AHL year in 21-22, where he went almost a point a game as an AHL rookie, uh, he's uh, sort of struggled a little bit mo more with his development uh, in recent years. He, he went again over a point a game the year after, but he, it was a season split between the AHL and NHL, uh, where he scored 37 points in his 35 AHL. AHL games and this past season he only got into about uh like 25 or, or 30 games at uh at the professional level uh with a lot of injury issues and he played 13 games in the NHL logging three points as well as 18 games in the AHL logging 12 points the key for his development is going to be consistent minutes he needs to play uh if he's getting injured like this his development's going to stagnate but i really think he's he's ready for that leap to the nhl he's really skilled offensively he has a high motor he's 23 years old now he's ready to take that next step he was a 2019 first round selection for Calgary, and I'm really hoping he's able to stay healthy and make an NHL impact, because if the Calgary Flames are able to, to get guys like Coronado and Pelletier in in top nine roles, that moves a lot of other players down the lineup into positions and, and roles where, they're, where they should be playing, rather than overextending on their abilities, and might get Calgary into a bit more of a competitive role of perhaps even pushing for a wild card spot. We'll see if that happens or not. It'll, it's going to be tough unless Dustin Wolf is able to fully replace the impact of Jacob Markstrom. But uh, moving on to the defenseman here, obviously Zane Parekh is the prospect in this pool by a mile. He is uh, he's an elite level prospect. He's a fantastic A level blue chip prospect that I think every single team in the NHL would adore to have in their cupboards. And uh, Calgary is the one team that does. So uh, his development is going to be fantastic to track, but he's not the only OHL offensive defenseman in this pool. We've already talked about Henry Muse and uh, mentioned as well Hunter Bruce Davids, uh, who's another really fun offensive defenseman playing in the in, in the OHL with the Kitchener Rangers. A really good playmaker, really fantastic passer. He's a facilitator of play in all three zones. Great stretch passer in transition. Great passer in the offensive zone towards the net front. A lot of his uh, points come from just fantastic passing ability rather than really high end playmaking skill. Uh, if that makes sense, and his defensive game is is marked by by a decent level of of um, of snarl in his physical game, um, but there's still a lot of habits uh, in terms of gap control and uh, and keeping on to his assignment and switching assignments fluidly. That is still a bit more of a work in progress. He's going to need another two or so years before he's able to make the leap to the NHL level. But a very exciting prospect who was acquired in that Lindholm trade. Uh, next, we also still have Artyom Grushnikov, uh, who was acquired from the Dallas Stars in that um, Chris Tanev deal. Just a really physical defensive defenseman who's already been playing in the AHL for the Stockton Heat uh, this at, at the tail, tail end of this past year, logging a single assist in 20-something games. Not a big offensive defenseman by any means, but he's physical, he's mean, he's going to be an NHL or in a depth role, likely. Uh, and the Calgary Flames specifically targeted him in that deal. They really like what he brings to the table. Jan Kuznetsov is a bit along the same lines. He was drafted by Calgary a couple of years ago. 
another really physical, snarly Russian defenseman who's been playing some decent minutes in the AHL, not putting up many points, but really being able to showcase the level of physicality and defensive grit that he brings to the equation. Jérémy Poirier and Étienne Morin are two uh, Québécois offensive defensemen. Uh, Poirier is now developing in the AHL, already having graduated from the Q, uh, and a really good playmaker, fantastic skill, really great offensive vision. So a lot of question marks around the defensive capabilities. If you were able to like combine him with a guy like Grushnikov or Kuznetsov, you would get a fantastic prospect. But both of these players, like individually, uh, they just have lackings that, that the other has the opposite lackings, right? Uh, and uh, Etienne Morin is a really intelligent defenseman, but the skating's a question mark. The overall projectability of the offense is a question mark. And the, the defensive habits are also still a question mark. He was a bit of a, a swing on production and hoping that the tools and the habits are able to catch up to that ability to produce offense. But uh, in his D plus one development, he wasn't quite able to make that leap just yet. But moving on to the goaltenders, there's a couple interesting names here, namely Dustin Wolf. He is the guy in that for the Calgary Flames, especially now having dealt away Jacob Markstrom. He's going to be the 1A or 1B this season along with uh, with Dan Vladash. And I'm very curious to see what kind of step he's able to take. This is an undersized goaltender who's in incredibly intelligent and moves really, really well. He's athletic. He's intelligent. He's controlled. He's composed. Uh, also has a tendency to make some fantastic saves going post to post. Uh, the desperation ability to stop a play on, on the doorstep is a, is a really enticing part of his toolkit as well. Uh, and he's a player that I, I would love to see play 50 plus games in the NHL this season. He's been chugging along his development. He's been dominating the, 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 the AHL and he's been playing some NHL games and uh, was slowly coming into his own uh, towards the tail end of last year. Uh, but you also have two other uh, Russian goaltenders in the system that are really interesting. We've already talked about uh, about Kirill Zarubin, but there's also Yegor Yegorov in this system. There's some really toolsy, big Russian goaltenders who move well, are very athletic as well, uh, who are just really big swings on overall tools as goaltenders and just let them develop, let them marinate, let them learn uh, and and uh, refine and polish their games with time. But uh, that wraps up our positional breakdown of the prospect pool. In terms of areas of need, I think left shot defense is one area that is quite clearly still a bit weaker. Yes, you have uh, some physical or some offensive defensemen uh, in the system that play that left shot defense position, but I don't think any of them project as an impactful top pairing piece. Uh, getting a two-way piece on that left-hand side, especially as a complement to Zane Parekh, I think should be uh, one of the prospect things to, to focus on in the next couple drafts. Of course, they have a couple players already in the NHL. I mean, Mackenzie Weger comes comes to mind there, but uh, getting a, a new influx of talent in that position on defense will be important. Uh, getting a high-end dynamic offensive forward, uh, maybe on the wing, would be great, and getting a clear number one center prospect as well. So there are some clear holes in the overall uh, prospect pool, namely around the top end uh, of the pool and, and the elite projected players, but I'd still give this pool overall a B-plus or an A-minus grade it is a really strong pool especially having mainly been collected over the last two and three drafts um but uh yeah i think the calgary flames have a lot of really interesting talented players coming into the nhl in the coming seasons and we're going to want, want to wrap up this episode in the next segment uh looking ahead at the 2024-25 season but first a quick word from our sponsors If you want last minute tickets, Game Time is the place to be. With Game Time, you can get awesome last minute deals where you can save up to 60% on whatever event you are interested in, in attending. Whether it's a sporting event, whether it's a concert, a comedy show, whatever it is that you are interested in, Game Time has you covered. Game Time also offers awesome zone deals where you pick the zone or the section and Game Time selects the seat for you for added potential savings, especially if you have a, a really tight schedule and something opens up for you last minute where you have some time to go out and do something fun to treat yourself to an event. Game Time is exactly what you need. Game Time also gives you a lowest price guarantee. If you find a better price than what is listed on Game Time, just have to show that receipt to Game I mean, you will get 110% of the difference in order to go with game time to your event. 
Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, let's wrap up this episode here in the third segment with uh, looking ahead at the 2024-25 season for the Calgary Flames. Uh, the big hope here is that the young guns can take steps forward, whether that be in net with Dustin Wolf or at forward with guys like Connor Zari, Matthew Coronado, um, and uh, Jacob Pelletier as well. Now, there's a lot of uh, hope put into these young players and taking those big steps. Uh, we're also going to see on the defensive side of things how that defensive core is able to shake out in the end if any young players are going to surprise in training camp and force their way in. Uh, I'd be a little bit surprised if that happened this season, but uh, who knows? It's it's entirely possible. Uh, I think a big wild card is that defensive core. I think there's only about two or three defensemen in that in, in that core that are, are established top four pieces. Uh, I mean, Oliver Shillington isn't signed yet either. And uh, right now you just have Mackenzie Weger and you have Rasmus Anderson and everything else is a little bit more in flux. And I'm curious to see how that defensive course shakes out um, for the coming season. Again, if any younger players able to wrestle their way into that mix. Uh, and I'm also curious to see how that Calgary coaching is able to support the development of young players this season. Are they going to entrust Dustin Wolf with a lot of minutes, with a lot of opportunity, with the ability to make mistakes and lose games in order to learn from that and progress his development? Um, I'm, I'm curious to see if the power play is going to allow young players to have like bigger roles, bigger minutes in those situations to get more comfortable with the puck on their stick in space and time at the NHL level. Uh, and I'm curious to see how the young players are able to perform with those opportunities, whether it be Connor Zari potentially hitting 50 points this season, be 20 goals, uh, Dustin Wolf. I'm, I'm hoping he's able to get into 50 games this season uh, and maybe be able to log like a, a, a three goals against average as well as like a 905 plus a percentage and if Matthew Coronado is able to come into his own of his own as a, as a real third line piece that is just reliable night in night out and can put up 15 goals and 30 points I think this team is in a decent shape to maybe not do damage in the Western Conference but at least be really in the mix and competitive night in night out whether or not they're able to secure a playoff spot this season there's a lot of these young players that I think are going to uh, very much be in a bit of a make or break season in their development, namely uh, Matthew Coronado and Jacob Pelletier uh, in terms of like, these are guys that are 22, 23 years old, have yet to fully entrench themselves in the NHL, let alone in the top nine at the NHL level, but have so much skill and projectable talent that they should theoretically be able to put it all together at the NHL level, but uh, just hasn't happened just yet. And at this stage, in development curves these seasons uh, around that, that 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 crux point of being able to crack the NHL or not are incredibly important uh, in, in uh, projecting what the overall career outlook looks like for these players. Are there going to be overall tweeners for most of their careers or are they going to be really valuable top nine pieces that Calgary is just very like elated to have in their fold uh, moving forward through the next through the next years. But um, I think overall Calgary will be looking Looking to uh, just make some progression from this season, maybe get out of the bottom ten basement of this of the league, and uh, at, at least have a fighting shot at a wild card spot, at least in the first half of the season. Maybe trailing off a little bit more as the year progresses and players get tired, and other teams in the West stack up uh, for playoff runs uh, at the deadline, and so on. But I, I do believe that Calgary has enough talent in their organization to make a push. If Dustin Wolf is able to be a, a real starting caliber goaltender, if uh, Jonathan Huberdo is able to take a couple of steps as well to regain some of that top line potential that he's been uh, top line like, like ability that he's shown for many seasons in his career that just hasn't happened in Calgary on a consistent basis. Uh, maybe Nazem Kadri can still be that that like 
potentially like top line center, at least for one or two more seasons at this rate. And uh, I'd love to see Calgary in the mix and especially to make those Calgary Edmonton games as entertaining as they can possibly be. The battle of Alberta is always among the, the highlights uh, or the most chaotic games of the NHL season. And if uh, Calgary is competitive this season and can make those games really tight and interesting, I think we'll be in for a really fun show, but that wraps up this breakdown of the Calgary Flames overall prospect pool, their 2024 draft class, as well as their season outlook moving forward. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, please leave us a comment down below. Let us know which prospects in this system are you most excited by? Obviously, Zane Parekh, but who else and why? Um, which draft selections in the 2024 class were you really big fans of? Do you maybe have a different take on Matt Bay Greeden from, from me? I, I, I'm sure other people are bigger fans of his NHL projection than I am, and I'd be curious to hear what you like in his game if that is the case, and uh, what your thoughts are about this upcoming season for Calgary. How is Dustin Wolf going to perform? How is uh, Matt Coronado, Coronado going to progress, as well as Jacob Pelletze? There's a lot of storylines to follow here in Calgary for the next season. Season. But if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please uh, make us your first listen of the day. We always appreciate it when our everydayers tune in week in, week out. And for your second listen of the day, go and uh, check out Locked On Sports Today. It is a 24-hour news stream with all the sporting information you could possibly want to have access to. But that wraps things up for us here today. I'm Sebastian Hyde, the Director of European Scouting over at Dauber Prospects, and uh, typically joined by Hattie Kalakesh, and we hope that you tune back in very shortly.